Did dead Jesus save himself out of death? No. Orthodox Christianity says he did save himself out of death. But they also teach that he was alive while he was dead. Hmm. Alive while dead. That's a pretty cool trick. Yes, they try to tell us that Jesus was not the dead dead, but the living dead. Christian Trinitarians need Jesus to be alive while he was dead. If Jesus, who was one-third of the Trinitarian God, was actually dead and did not exist for three days, then the Trinitarian God did not exist for three days. That's a problem. A big one. Those who proclaim that Jesus was alive and well while dead usually go to John 2, 18 through 21 to try to prove that Jesus was alive and that he saved himself out of death. But the scriptures contradict these tricky Trinitarian teachings. This current video is a follow-up to my last video in which I showed that Jesus' Father, the only true God, was the one who saved dead Jesus out of death. This glory belongs to the Father alone. And in that video, I showed why it's important to believe that Jesus' Father was the one who saved dead Jesus out of death. I want to quickly go through some of the key verses from that video that will be foundational and helpful in this current video. Hebrews 5 7 from the concordant literal New Testament. Christ in the days of his flesh offering both petitions and supplications with strong clamor and tears to him who is able to save him out of death. Christ knew he was going to die. He knew he needed someone to save him out of death. Thankfully, he knew someone who could and would, his father. Jesus knew he needed his father to save him out of death because Jesus knew the truth about death. He knew the dead know nothing and the dead do nothing. He knew that he would know nothing and do nothing while he was dead. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10 from the concordant version of the Old Testament. But the dead know nothing whatsoever, for there is no doing or devising, or knowledge, or wisdom in the unseen where you are going. Luke 20, 38. Now God is he not of the dead, but of the living, for all to him are living. While Jesus was dead, his father was not his God. His father was not his placer. There's no need for God to place dead people. They're dead. Luke 23, 46. And shouting with a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into thy hands am I committing my spirit. Now saying this, he expires. It's important to know that when Jesus' spirit left his body, his soul died. He died. The living soul is the result of the spirit being joined with the body. And note whose hands hold Jesus' spirit, his father's. Jesus did not retain his spirit while he was dead. 1 Timothy 6:13. I am charging you in the sight of God, who is vivifying all, and of Jesus Christ, who testifies in the ideal of vow before Pontius Pilate, in 1 Peter 3.18, saying that Christ also for our sakes once died concerning sins, the just for the sake of the unjust, that he may be leading us to God, being put to death indeed in flesh, yet vivified in spirit. God is the one who is vivifying all. He is the one who will make all immortal and incorruptible. He vivified his dead son. Jesus is currently the only human who has been vivified. He's the only human who is currently immortal. John 6, 57. According as the living Father commissions me, I also am living because of the Father. A great question regarding Jesus is, where did Jesus get his life? Trinitarians want us to believe that Jesus has eternal life, just like his Father, life with no beginning and no end. This verse denies that false teaching. Jesus lives only because of the Father. This was true when God first created his Son, the firstborn of every creature, Colossians 1.15, and it was true when God saved his dead Son out of death. 2 Corinthians 13.4 For even if Christ was crucified out of weakness, nevertheless he is living by the power of God. For we also are weak together with him, but we shall be living together with him by the power of God for you. The crucified one, dead Jesus, is living now only by the power of God, his Father. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator of God and mankind, a man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 4.10 We rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. Christ Jesus is a man, and his Father is his Savior out of death. Thus, God is the Savior of all mankind. Romans 10.9 
that if ever you should be avowing with your mouth the declaration that Jesus is Lord and should be believing in your heart that God rouses him from among the dead, you shall be saved. We experience our salvation and are sealed with the Holy Spirit when God grants us belief that God, Jesus' Father, roused Jesus from among the dead, not that Jesus roused himself out of death. I strongly encourage you to watch that previous video. The false teaching of a living dead Jesus who saved himself out of death is very popular, despite much in the scriptures that contradicts it. It is one of Satan's masterpieces of deception, seducing millions into believing lies. Let's take a look at John 2 and see how Trinitarians try to use this passage to prove that Jesus was alive and saved himself out of death. Jesus had just caused a ruckus by clearing out the sanctuary and overturning the tables of the money changers, and the Jews weren't too happy about it. John 2, 18 through 22. The Jews then answered and said to him, What sign are you showing us, seeing that you are doing these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Raise this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, In forty and six years was this temple built, and you will be raising it up in three days? Yet he said it concerning the temple of his body. When then he was roused from among the dead, his disciples are reminded that he said this, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. People who want so badly for Jesus to have somehow survived his death say this passage proves he was alive in death and saved himself out of death. But this passage does not support that false doctrine. Just a quick note, I've seen Trinitarians teach on this passage, and some will leave out verse 22. We'll see shortly why verse 22 is very important and must be included when teaching on this passage. The Jews asked Jesus for a sign, verifying his authority to clear out the sanctuary. His response was, Raise this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They understood him to be talking about the temple they were standing in. Verse 20, The Jews then said, In forty and six years was this temple built, and you will be raising it up in three days? They were quite skeptical, but probably very eager to see that sign. Yes, I was very eager to see it. That would be a cool trick. But Jesus was not talking about the temple. He was talking about his body that his enemies would eventually beat to a bloody pulp when they killed him. Verse 21, yet he said it concerning the temple of his body. Verse 22, when then he was roused from among the dead, his disciples are reminded that he said this, and they believe the scripture and the word which Jesus said. There are three words in this passage that are key to our understanding. Raise in verse 19, raising in verse 20, and roused in verse 22. All three are translated from the same base Greek verb, egero, which is used in various forms in the Greek scriptures over 140 times. In verse 19, it is in the active voice, with Jesus doing the raising, which he will do to the temple, his body. Sorry to interrupt, just a reminder, dead people don't actively do things, they're dead. In verse 20, it is in the active voice, with Jesus doing the future raising of the temple. In verse 22, it is in the passive voice with Jesus himself being roused from among the dead. He is roused by his Father, the one who saved him out of death. Now do you see why some leave off verse 22 when addressing this passage? Verse 22 puts Jesus' salvation out of death completely into his Father's hands. So what's going on here? If you recall, when Jesus died, he said, Father, into thy hands am I committing my spirit. For mankind, when the spirit is joined with the body, the result is a living soul, a living person. When the spirit and body are separated, the person dies, the living soul dies, the person ceases to exist. When Jesus committed his spirit into his Father's capable hands, Jesus died. The moment his father returned Jesus' spirit to Jesus' body, Jesus was saved out of death and lived again. That is what is being described in verse 22. Jesus was roused from among the dead by his father. In verse 19, Jesus is talking about raising his living body up, as we see explained in verse 21. He will raise it up after his spirit is returned to his body by his father. The basic meaning of agero is to awake from literal sleep. And since death is likened to sleep throughout the scriptures, God also used agero when speaking of someone being awakened out of the sleep of death. Let's look at an example of each in the scriptures. Matthew 1, 24. Now, being roused from sleep, Joseph does as the messenger of the Lord bids him, and he accepted his wife. 
in Acts 26, 8. The Apostle Paul speaking here. Why is it being judged unbelievable by you if God is rousing the dead? In Matthew, we see Agero used of Joseph being roused from sleep by the messenger. In Acts, Paul uses Agero to speak of God rousing the dead. Did the dead rouse themselves? No, neither did dead Jesus. But God has employed the word agero in the Greek scriptures with a wider range of usage than these. We also see God use it of a living person rising up from a lying or sitting position. Luke 6, 8, Yet Jesus had perceived their reasonings. Now he said to the man having a withered hand, Rouse and stand in the midst. And rising, he stood. And John 5, 8, Jesus is saying to him, an infirm man who is lying down, Rouse and pick up your pallet and walk. In these two verses, we have Agero being used of two living and awake men rousing up to a standing position. Let's go back to John 2. In verse 21, we see that Jesus speaking of the temple was in reality about his body. So what we have in this passage is the Father returning Jesus' spirit to his body and awakening Jesus out of the sleep of death. Then Jesus, now alive, raises up his body to a standing position before he exits the tomb. There's your sign, unbeliever. And Jesus resumes living his life by the power of his Father. Even the Jews in this passage used agero when speaking of physically raising a physical object up from a lower position when they were speaking of the stone temple in verse 20. Jesus told the Jews he was going to do something. He was going to raise his body, and that's exactly what he did. But he couldn't do this until his father returned Jesus' spirit to his body and gave his son life again. Dead Jesus did not save himself out of death because he could not save himself out of death. He was dead. The dead do nothing, and the dead know nothing. But thankfully, Jesus knew the one who could and would save him out of death, his Father, the only true God. To the Father alone belongs this glory of saving his Son out of death, and he will save you out of death also. Jesus' death and resurrection are proof of God's love for us, all of us. Romans 5, 8 says, God is commending this love of his to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. Jesus died for our sake, for our benefit, for all of us. And all of us will benefit from his death, which took away the sin of the world, which took away your sin. God is at peace with you. Be at peace with God. Enjoy his grace. If you haven't watched my previous video on this subject, I invite you to do so now. If you've seen that video, I invite you to watch another video and see how God is at peace with everyone. God is at peace with you. Sorry to interrupt. Just a reminder, dead people don't actively do things. They're dead.